This is Howard, 65046, ready to go. Roger. going to shoot this thing, put it out of its misery. Oh, now, Briggs, you shouldn't talk like that. This faithful old beast of burden has got plenty of miles left in it. What are you doing just sitting there? It's your turn to get the water. As soon as I get me some money, I'm going back to Kentucky. Just get the water and stop Billy. Those old buckets we've been using. Don't get them. How can we sell them if you get them? See? Are you happy now? There's a street right down the hill.
It's a bad time. Hey. It's only half full. It's enough to get us on down the road, please. Listen, why don't you hurry it up? I don't like it up here at all. What's eating you? There's something out there, Jasper. I've seen big, huge footprints down by that stream. Like I've never seen before. Riggs, my good man, if you continue to travel with me, you'll see a lot of things you've never seen before.
Daddy, who are all these people in Benny's store? I don't know, honey. Just weekend bike riders, I guess. Come on, your mother's waiting. Okay. Hey, you. Give that back to me. What's the trouble? Bob? Make him give that back. We need to size up our drinks, Mike. Well, then pay the man for it. Uh, how much? Well, that's a pretty good ice chest. How about two dollars? Looks like a good place to get rid of some of your junk. Uh, it wouldn't be too sure, Briggs. A fellow that survived in a town like this might be a pretty sharp traitor. How do you do? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Jasper B. Hawks, sole proprietor of one of the few remaining traveling stores. Since you are a retailer, we offer a handsome discount to you on any item you may care to purchase. Oh, this is my associate, Mr. Elmer Briggs. How are you, Elmer? How do you do, sir? What could I do for you, Judge? Well, before we talk any business, uh, Mr. Mr. Bennett. Bennett. Oh, Bennett. Well, Mr. Bennett, uh, my associate and I would like to cool our dry throats with some good cold beer. And not a drop of beer in the house. That wild motorcycle outfit just left here took the last can we had. Well then, Mr. Bennett, we'll just have to impose upon your hospitality to substitute whatever you've got in stock to Queen Charles III. Pa, these gentlemen do look a little thirsty. Let me get them a couple of Pepsi. Oh, that's a good girl. Fine daughter, that daughter of mine. A very fine daughter. <laughs> Ain't you coming, Rick? You and Peggy go on. We'll, uh, join you later. Where are you going? Can't you see they want to be alone? I We're not you. back by the time you leave. Uh, don't worry. We'll catch up to you on the road. You play nice, here. Too bad if we were stuck here all alone. Hey now. Don't get started or we will be here all night. All right, go ahead. Make love to your iron mistress.
place looks like uh, an old Indian burial ground. Hey, dig the size of these graves. They must have been giants. This one looks fresh. What are you doing? I want to see what's in it. Rick. Oh, relax. Oh. Leave it alone and, and let's get out of here. Get a load of this. Nice to see you again, Ms. Cummins. Oh, honey, look, I've got something for you. A little present for you. All right? Come on, dear. Mr. Bennett, I'll tell you what I'll do. I got an even baker's dozen of these, and I'm plumb tired out cotton them around the countryside. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you all 13 getaway charge you bother me for the price of six. Now, you won't have any trouble getting rid of them, because on these rough roads, these gadgets are always wet. Look, I don't need this stuff. You fellas have been around here for a couple of hours, you introduce your friend to me and all that sort of thing, and I like it. But I can't use it. That's all. Pa, I'm going to lock up the money in a safe. OK, honey, I'll be in shortly. Can you? Yes, it's over there on the wall. Don't make it a long distance call. Just local. Hello? Give me the sheriff's office. Hello, sheriff? Can you come up to... What's the name of this place? 
Bennett's store. He knows where it is. I'm at Bennett's store, Sheriff. And something terrible's happened. Hank. Hank. Yeah? Another one of them preacher stories. Only this one tops them all. It took off with this girl, he thinks. <laughs> well, I don't blame that creature. If it's one of them sweet little things. <laughs> now, what you say, I ain't denying. But do you know how many calls I get a year from people who claim they see these things? I know. I know. Now, son, why don't you just go on home and go to bed? If your girl doesn't show up by morning, well, just give us a ring and we'll come and look things over for you. But, Sheriff, I swear it. I'm sure it's got her. Yeah, well, I'll go up and take a look for myself. If you're what the taxpayers are paying for. Hey, you hold it, boy. I don't know who you are, and this could be one of them prank calls. But if you think you're going to get me on top of that mountain tonight on some wild goose chase, you've got another thought coming. Why don't you talk to Bennett? Good idea. Hey, boy, put Mr. Bennett on the phone. He wants to speak to you, Mr. Bennett. Oh, all right. Hello, Cyrus. What's going on up there? Boy, telling the truth? Well, he just could be. There's been a lot of strange things going on around here lately. <clears throat> no, the girl's not with him now. She was with him this afternoon when he was in here, though. Well, now, Bennett, the boy's just a little excited. I'll tell you what. Hank and I will come up in the morning and have a look around. Goodbye, Cyrus. Yeah, get me eight seven five three four zero oh, one. Wheel, get back out here on the double. I need help. You won't believe this, Wheels, but a huge, strange-looking creature all covered with hair flattened me, and I can't find Chris. No, I'm not kidding. I called the sheriff, and he... Okay, you get back out here, but fast. I need a gun and a flashlight, mister. Can you tell them to me? We're out of flashlights. We don't have much call for guns around here. I told you there was something strange down by the creek bed, Cousin Hopkins. Pretty fetching story, son. I suppose you think we were born yesterday to believe a tale like that. Are you calling me a liar, mister? Oh, the boy, don't get your pressure up. It isn't every day we hear tell of a critter such as you described running off with a pretty filly. Now, wait a minute. This might be very serious business, Mr. Hawks. I've got every reason in the world to believe this boy's telling the truth. Yes, I have, because a couple of months ago, there was a pair come up here, a young couple, on a camping trip up in these parts. They went up on top of the mountain by a beautiful lake up there. Something awful happened up there. They found the boy dead, broken neck, and the girl they never did find. Beautiful blonde, too. Tell you what, boy. I got guns and lights out in the car. Suppose my friend Briggs here and I go along with you, get a look-see at this vomit. Wait a minute there, Jasper. I ain't go along with you on any wild goose chase. Briggs, can't you understand what we got here? I heard tell of these things before. Read an article a magazine about a month ago. Some hunters got a picture of one of them. If we could catch one of these critters, we can live high on the hog for the rest of our lives. Look, I appreciate your help, but all I want to do is get my girl back. We'll do that for you, all right, boy. We got another reason for joining you. Right, Briggs? Oh, I've got to hand it to you, Jasper. You can smell a dollar sign a mile away. But come on, boy, we haven't got any time to lose. Hold it, men. You better watch your step when you go up there. Been strange doings in them mountains, especially at night. Mr. Bennett, we aim to be careful. Whatever those things are up there, they better watch out for Jasper B. Hall.
Just the play. Well, I wonder what that do say. This must be one of them fern cemeteries. Can't understand a word written on that tombstone. This is remarkable, Briggs. As a former student of archaeology, I recognize these markings as having a peculiar significance. Here. Maybe this will convince you more. Glory be. Now, do you believe me? What kind of creature is that, anyhow? What well, separates them from animals and primates? They bear their own day. Cut the hogs, huh? I got a feeling we better get out of here. The sooner the better. Now, you listen to me, Briggs. You and me is going to make a fortune out of this. There's no turning back for anything. I want you to get something straight right now, Mr. Hawks. We came up here to get my girl. Nothing else. Boy, maybe you ought to get something straight. You need us worse than we need you. Biggs and I, we got guns, we got lights. We aim to get that creature alive. If we find a girl there, fine, we get her too. I figure you ought to be mighty grateful Briggs and I came along with you. See, we're businessmen. We're going to spend our time here. We aim to make it worthwhile. You understand? What do these creatures want? They're more human than you think. I'm sure that's why they brought us here. But why? The only thing I can figure out is that they're a dying race, and they want to reproduce more of their own kind. How horrible. I tried to escape once, but these creatures have such an acute sense of smell and all that they can find you anywhere. What happened to the other girl? They took her away. I haven't seen her since. But what are they? They're practically subhuman. Except that they still live like animals. What do you mean? Have you ever heard of the gap? The gap between the Neanderthal man and the human? Like the missing link? Exactly. Scientists say there is a missing link. Well, maybe these creatures are what they're talking about. Have they done anything to you yet? No. That's the odd part of it. I have the strangest feeling they're saving me for something special. But what? I don't know. But there's something they seem to fear on top of this mountain. What could they possibly be afraid of? Something more powerful than them, maybe. Now, stop! I, I just got to rest before we get to that stream. You blame fool, Briggs. Haven't you got any better sense than to holler out here in the middle of nowhere? I just can't get no further, Jasper. I'm plumb tuckered out. Well, you got a lot more to go, so you might just as well get used to it. <laughs> 
Well, he ain't gonna do no good in the dark. You can count on that. Especially since we don't know the territory. Okay. Stay here tonight, Briggs, if you want to. Mr. Hawks and I are going on ahead. Are you gonna let him talk to me like that, Jasper? I'll hold it, both of you. Ever since you're getting your feathers ruffled over nothing, Briggs got a point. That's a pretty steep climb up that bluff. We might just be a little bit local trying to get there in the dark. Give me that rifle and that flashlight so I can go on by myself. Well, now, boy, you just go right on ahead and be a hero. That's what you want to do. But you're not taking my rifle or my light. Of course, if Briggs wants to give you his, I ain't going to give my gun and light to anybody. I need it for myself, for my own protection. I see where I stand, but I'm still going on. Boy, you haven't got as good sense as I give you credit for. What are you trying to say, Mr. Hawks? Now, look here. Boy. It's going to be daylight in a few hours. We can march through these woods all night without sleep. But come morning, we'll be so plumb tired, we won't be alert enough to see what's happening. And that's exactly what's going to happen. You keep on talking stupid. Cousin Hawks is right, son. Now, he's hunted all kinds of armies all over the country. And he ain't going to give you any misguidance. I guess you're right. We've come quite a ways already. Maybe we'd better rest. Best news I heard so far. Well, you two fellas turn too. I'm going to stand lookout for a while. Cousin Hawks, you reckon that varmint's out there somewhere's in the dark, waiting for us to fall asleep? I don't reckon that varmint's anywhere when you're hollering distance. But I'm not taking any chances. I wonder if Chris is still... Oh, alive. she's all right, boy. Well, look. That critter wanted to kill you, he done down by the graveyard. No, sir. You find out she's perfectly all right. We gotta make tracks good and fast come morning. What do you think they're doing with it? There's no sense worrying about that tonight. You'll find all the answers in the morning. What are they going to do? They're probably going hunting. They'll leave their baby here to watch us. Looks so different from the others. It could be a hybrid. Hybrid? Yes. One of his parents had to be a creature. And the other might have been human. <coughs> We're guessing right. They're trying to throw us off the track crossing that stream. Up this cliff. We can't fool Jasper B. Hawks. How far away do you think they are, Mr. Hawks? Uh, we're a spell ahead of them yet. But even that creature's got to rest sometime. And there's no sign anywhere, even stop, let alone bed it down. I surely do hope your cycle buddies are on the way. They'll be along.
There we go. Right up there into those mountains. You know, Briggs, if I had my blue ticks and red bones here, we'd just sit back and let those hounds first take quit out of the thicket. <coughs> Briggs, you get on ahead of us, peace. Pleasant Hawks, if I see that thing, they get take a shot at it. You just let me decide that when the time comes. Get on up there. We got a lot of ground to cover. Now, Jasper, I don't smell nothing. No, you wouldn't. All you can smell is you. There's something around here. It's coming from right over there. Knock it off, Hawks. We're up here to rescue my girl, remember? Get her, all right, boy. You just let me wing him, Jasper. You catch in the head. You wing one of those critters be like being in a cage with a wounded bar. No. We'll follow him. I know where the girl is first. Why don't we just quit, Jasper? We'd have lost the track. We came up here to find that critter, and we're going to find it. Now, how do you know it didn't just go down the other side? We don't, boy. But it's got to live somewhere, and I got a hunch it's right up there. Jasper, my old legs ain't holding out too good. Well, they'd better, because we're not quitting until we find it. But dog, we're, we're sitting on a million dollars, Briggs, and it's right up there. When we find it, Mr. Hawks, I want you to shoot it. Now, hold on, boy. Not if I don't have to. That critter's worth more alive to me than dead. You can always stop it and take it on tour. People think to see that. You just worry about those legs of yours not giving out. And you do anything crazy like shooting at it, I'm going to skin you alive and stuff you. <laughs> you look mighty pretty halfway through the wall over my mantelpiece. <laughs> You're so anxious to catch that critter alive. Just how do you plan to do it? 
When that time comes, boy, if he comes, then I'll show you. Come on. Good morning, Nellie. Good morning, Sheriff. Hey. How are you doing, fellas? Howdy, Sheriff. How you all? Ah, it's good seeing you two again. Uh, what brings you up here in these parts? Well, I was talking to your dad on the phone last night, and some boy who was real excited about seeing things. Hank and I just took a ride up to check it out. Where's your dad? You just missed him. He had to go down to the county seat on business. But uh, Pa told me about that boy who called you last night. Well, he left with a couple of peddlers. Hard telling where he went. Well, they're going to have mighty tough going if they head on up into that high country. I sure wish your dad was around. Deer season open soon, and I plan on being right here for opening day. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Sheriff? Yeah. You know that crossing up by the old soil mill? I sure do. I just spotted a ten-pointer and a couple of those up there. Well, thank you, Hard Rock. I'll have a look. You're welcome. Sure, your vittles, Hard Rock. This ought to hold you and Fallen Star for quite a spell. Give them to Slim. Yeah, hurry up. Slim, that's the boy. Here's the you. other box. Oh, Hey, well. Hi, Hard Rock. Thank you, Hank. Bye, Nellie. See you, Sheriff. Bye. Bye. Fellas, that's nothing. Last night, I seen a 12-pointer right in back of the store. Ooh. Oh, oh, Cyrus, you can have that sawmill. I just sit out here and back and wait for that 12-pointer. <laughs> Sheriff, I mean, Cyrus, I'm kind of inclined to believe that boy who called you last night I really think he did see something. He was very upset. I don't know. If there's any trouble, we'll hear from the ranger station. Yeah. They probably just took off and went on their way. I wouldn't be too sure about that, Hank. That boy's cycle is still parked out front. I've seen that sickle parked out there. One of them fancy rigs. I bet that thing must have cost a hundred dollars. He'll be back for it sooner or later. You tell your dad I'm sorry I missed him. I'll see you Friday night. <laughs> Cyrus, please don't forget your stogies. You get mighty mean to live with when you run out. <laughs> Almost forgot what I came after. See you Friday. Bye. Bye, Cyrus. Hank, see you. Thank you, Helen. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You know, Nellie, sometimes I think that hard rock's seeing things. I think he's getting senile. I've been working up there around that, uh, that logging place up there for a long spell. I ain't never seen no deer up there as big as he said they were. Henry, nobody believes them creature stories either. 
But I know there's something mighty peculiar up there. Henry, did you know that Hard Rock had one too many cards? Wow! Jeez, look at this. What is it? What have the, is he sure is big and ugly. That's a gorilla, stupid. That the kind of creature that Rick was talking about? I guess so. Well, you can count me out. What do you mean? <laughs> You're going after one of them things, you've got to be kidding. We're split. What do you think, Wheels? Let him go. Then let's get moving. <laughs> What are you doing up here? We lost one of our buddies. Then he called us and said something about some big creature taking his girl. Sasquatch. Sasquatch who? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? That's in them talk. Or Bigfoot. Bigfoot? Ain't so funny, fellas. Them creatures are up there on top somewhere. Then it's true? Taken from old Hard Rock. A couple of years ago, he was up in the hills. He saw one of them. I hear the noise and smell the musky odor. And I looked up and I saw some kind of a strange creature all covered over with hair, almost nine foot high. He grabbed me, but I pulled away. But I lost this. I'd keep away from up there if I were you folks. Why, even the Indians out here won't go up in that high country. Mister? We ain't got much choice. Tell you what, you're set on going up there. Maybe me and Slim can go along too. Maybe we can help you out. Go in the store, get my coat and my shotgun. Don't worry, honey. We'll be back. Shicha, what can she chop? What's that mean? That's soon for bad medicine. Let's get moving. Here is enough of us now. Maybe I can settle a little score. You ready, Slim? I'm with you, Hard Rock. Follow me. I know a shortcut up to the top here. Hey, wait! Little Fields, look at this, baby! Dynamite. Where'd you get it? Back of the shaft, man. They got plenty of it back. That's been back there for years. I don't care. I'm gonna take it along just in case. Well, we better get moving. What are those critters going to do with us? They don't seem to have much use for men. They'll probably kill all of you. Well, that remains to be seen. 
jazz would be a hawk's been in a lot of tight spots. We always got out of them. Well, you better do something pretty fast, cousin Hawks. I don't like the way them critters is looking at us. so darn funny at that. I've gotten a few of them calls when I've been here alone at night. <laughs> I've been sheriff of this county going on to 20 years. If I believed all them stories about people seeing those creatures. I'd be plumb loco chasing them out. Yeah, I guess you're right. Hey, look at this. Here's a guy they're really after. And we know he exists. They had him in jail for a year. Bad check writer, huh? Well, he won't cash any of that bad reading at Bennett's. Why? He comes through here, better be the first one to let us know that there's a stranger case and checks. <laughs> uh, how about cleaning the rest of our guns? Sure. I'm going home and get some rest. I need some. Cyrus, let's take a gander up there tomorrow. Could be that young fella just might be on the level. <laughs> Fresh air will feel good. Been looking like rain, though, lately. Weather's really unpredictable this time of year. But we'll take a ride. Hey, give me my favorite 20-gauge Remington automatic there, will you? Creature, Cyrus? Rabbits. <laughs> Driving us. 
See that baby crib over there? That brings his money. A whole lot of money. Oh, maybe not as much as Bigfoot, but this one will grow up. And it'll be ours. All ours. Yours and mine. Well, now is a hell of a time to talk about business. That's the difference in our upbringing. That's why I got a successful selling business and you're working for me. Well, if you're so successful, why do we spend our time sleeping in that station wagon instead of in one of them fancy cabin camps? You stick with me, you maybe one day own one of them fancy cabin camps. Maybe a whole string of them. How do you figure that? Remember all the money we made in that carnival? That big snake from South America? All those people paid 50 cents just to see it. Oh, yes, I remember that, Cousin Hawks. You know, that old snake hadn't a dad. We'd have been rich for now. We got something here to make more money than that snake ever could. They had to be 100 years old. Yeah. Mr. Clement said that uh, we'd come back to the carnival if we ever found anything else interesting. We don't need any broken down carnival manager to take the cream off this deal. I can see it now. The Jasper B. Hawks traveling show. With the greatest spectacle of all time. The missing link. Oh. Yeah, but first I'd, uh, I'd like to get out of here. And then hear more about it. You just got no imagination.
hear that? in the loon, Cousin Hawks. I ain't a beerish man, Briggs. Now, come on, we got them critters on the run. But with me, you ain't. The only place that I'm a-going is back to the car. You just do that, Briggs. When I get a hold of another little creatures, don't you come around wanting your half interest. Not on your tin type, I won't. Come along with me. We're with you, mister. Right, Hard Rock? Come on, Rick. Let's get her down the hill. Wheels. Thanks. Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute, boy. Wait a minute. I'll pay any one of you. Any one of you comes with me, I'll pay you. Well, now, friend, that makes a difference. Uh, that's more like it. I'm with you if you're paying money. Money? You ain't seen the likes of the money I'm going to pay you. I may be a Johnny Red, but this ain't Confederate money. Oh, come on. Thank you. 
Right up there, wait. Come on. in order. And showing up his Bigfoot. The eighth wonder of the world. Well, let's go get him. Yes, sir. For oh, Will. Hey, wait for me. That's my crit up there. Alive! <laughs> 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 
my quitter. My poor quitter. I'll never get him now. Well, Slim, we finally got him. It wasn't you, mister. It was beauty did him in. Come on, Hard Rock. I guess it's all over now. Yeah. Do you think he's really dead? Now, young lady, don't you look so sad? Yes, B. Hawks is right here to offer you the opportunity of a lifetime. What do you mean, Mr. Hawks? Now, my dear, I've been connected with some of the greatest phenomena of show business in the last few decades. Well, what has that got to do with me? Well, now, I'll just tell you, little flower. You and me are going to make a million dollars. We are? How? It's very simple. Just you and me together. Now, just you put your feet in Jasper B. Hawks. We are two of the country, the country, everywhere. Well, people all over the world will gladly pay a pretty penny. Not only to contemplate the delectable contours of your effulgent beauty, but also to hear all about the thrills and chills and risks you endured while you was a captive of these uh, yet-to-be-classified Bigfoot critters. It exists right here on this great earth. I can see it now. Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 